Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. In today's video, I am going to give you tips. Oh, hi, Luke. He always rolls over on the ground where you can't see him. He's so cute. I'm gonna go through just a few tips with you guys on basic tuning technique, on the different joints of the instrument, and a few fingering tricks you can keep in mind whenever you are trying to play more in tune with another person. With that said, I um, want to just remind you guys that I have a Facebook group that any of you can join for free. You can post yourself playing the weekly excerpts and get feedback comments, support, whatever you need from the people in the group. It's been going great so far and everybody has been really wonderful and kind and supportive. So thank you for that. I'd also like to thank my patrons. Uh, you guys are making this channel possible. Thank you all so much for supporting me over the past year and a half. Okay, so let's get into tuning. So the first thing you guys are gonna say I, uh, is like, what is this guy doing here, okay? I, I don't wanna tell you to go out and buy a bunch of fancy equipment or anything, so I'm gonna switch this barrel out for my one of my stock barrels. And we are going to talk about tuning and just kind of work with what we all have and not worry about fancy equipment and stuff, okay? Many of you already know this, but when we're tuning, we want to tune on stable notes on our instrument, okay? So uh, concert A is a pretty stable note um, for most clarinets, so you need to know what your tendency is to be on that concert A, which is our middle B. So that's what the orchestra tunes to. So what I personally do is I will check my B right here. I'll check my low B, which happens to normally be a sharp note. Um, and I'll check my high B, which is usually pretty in tune as well. So uh, I check all three of those before I make any adjustments on my instrument, okay? So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, and I am going to use the application Tonal Energy. Uh, so when you're using Tonal Energy, make sure that you have it set to equal temperaments. If you are set to just diatonic tuning, it's gonna be a little funny, okay? So don't, don't do that. Set it to equal tempered tuning and make sure you're also set to A440. And here we go. So I'm pretty consistently sharp all across the board. So we are gonna pull out a bit up here. If I had my little twisty barrel, I would just twist it out a little bit. So I'm gonna pull out a bunch here and we're gonna leave these two joints the same. All right, so my long B is a bit sharp, my high B is a little high too, and my lower joint is mostly normal. So we're gonna test those again. leave that where it is. Now, if my low B was sharp, 
but the other ones were okay. I would have actually pulled out a bit here at the middle joint, because the middle joint, the way this works, right, is you, you pull out up here to change the intonation of the entire instrument. You pull out here to change the intonation of the notes below this joint here. And then you pull out here if like these notes, like these pinky keys, the notes right here are sharp, right? And so this will affect here, this will affect everything below that, and then this will affect everything below that, okay? So this is actually my shorter barrel uh, for my Yamaha. I don't know where my longer barrel is. I also just don't like the sound of that one as much, so I don't keep it in my case. Um, so here we go. This is where we're at. So that's just general tuning of the instrument if you don't already know how to do that. Now the next few tips are just fingering things that you can do to change the intonation and the tuning of certain note ranges of your instrument. So when you are playing throat tones on many, many, many clarinets, throat tones run sharp. So that's G, like open G, middle of the staff G, A flat, A and B flat. These guys that don't involve, you know, this key here or this key here, just those guys, very open. So they tend to run sharp. And so what you can do to lower the pitch of them is to actually choose resonance fingerings. We call them resonance fingerings for each of the notes. So um, I am going to do that on my B flat. So, excuse me, on my B flat here. So on my concert A, because that, or on my concert A flat, because that tends to go a little sharp for me. So we're gonna we're gonna see how that goes. Okay, that's in tune. That's annoying. Uh. All right, so I have a problem with this clarinet, and that's that these notes are actually pretty in tune when I have the rest of the instrument in tune. So we're just gonna pretend that they're not and I'm gonna demonstrate this for you, okay? So we're gonna lower the pitch of just the um, open G. Okay, so you can see if you kind of work your way up the body of the instrument, it will lower the pitch more and more and more. So um, you could try that. Now the other the other side of the spectrum, some some folks um, there are certain mouthpieces that like lower the pitch of throat tones, and some instruments also just play a little bit flat on throat tones. So if that's you, and you need then then you need to bring the pitch of those notes up without pinching or biting or making them sound even worse than they already do. So you can actually vent some of these side keys here to make those notes in tune. And that actually works for some of the slow, slightly lower pitched in, uh, notes on the instrument as well. So the, the bottom line, E, uh, tends to run a little bit low for me sometimes. So it's really great if I'm tuning a C major chord, um, but uh, the rest of the time, it's really frustrating, especially if I'm playing octaves in like my clarinet quartet. Um, I'm just gonna kind of demonstrate, you know, just how effective adding vent keys are. So let's see. That's like 17 cents difference between with and without a vent key on that E. Now that tends to sound a little better on my other barrel. It's not quite as flat, but that's that's one of the, the big ones for me. Um, you can also do the same thing for your throat tones. The only problem with that is if you're venting your throat tones to raise the pitch, they will still sound um, 
a little less resonant than they would if you were just using resonance fingerings. But it's totally fine. The most important thing is to be in tune with the people around you, right? Um, so there's that trick. The other thing that um, a lot of us run into is actually the low A being really sharp. Which is not super insanely sharp. I could probably lower the pitch with just my mouth on that one. But if you don't want to do that and you don't want to sacrifice tone quality, you can actually add the F sharp key um, to lower the pitch and give it a little more resonance. <laughs> So that's a pretty happy little tuner right there on the low A. So I like that little trick. Adding that little F sharp can lower it without sacrificing tone quality and makes it just like a little bit more of a covered sound. All right, and in the clarion register, especially like the upper clarion register, if you tend to run a little bit flat on any of those notes and you know, you're really using good air support and you're making sure that your fingers are fully lifted off of the keys. This can actually make you go flat if you're not careful. But you know, if you're sure you're doing all the right fundamentals and stuff and everything else on your instruments in tune, but you just have one or two notes that need to be raised a little, you could actually add a couple of keys down in the bottom joint. So like um, on my old clarinet, high C, ran a little bit low, maybe like five cents flat, which was annoying, uh, you know, because no, who likes to be flat on high notes, right? So one of the things you can do is actually add the little sliver key right here, and that will raise it, at least on my instrument, maybe like three or four cents. Um, if it's even more flat, okay, I'm gonna try not to drop this. If it's even more flat, you could add this little E flat key, like the same thing you do for altissimo. So it makes a pretty significant difference, but it's a very subtle difference in tone and sound. It's just just tuning, right? Um, so I'm gonna play some duets for you. They're in the key of B flat major. Um, this is so you can kind of listen and maybe try to play as in tune as you can with me. And, you know, feel free to record these yourselves and try to put some of the stuff in into practice as well. Um, but I look forward to hearing some of you guys play this on the Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee practice group. Enjoy.
All right, guys, that was so much fun. Thank you so much for watching and for playing along with me today. I hope these tuning tips really help you guys out as ensembles are back into rehearsing and performing. And, you know, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. There are so many other tricks, too, for tuning and fingerings and things like that. This is this just barely, barely skims the surface. It's just very, very general, general things. So, um, Anyway, that being said, I hope you guys all have a good rest of your weekend, a wonderful week, and as always, happy practicing.